I'm Dr. Chuck Carr Brown. I'm the Secretary of Louisiana Department of Environmental Quality. Today we're going to bring you a video that kind of gives you an overview of how landfills operate and just basically status of current landfills in the state of Louisiana. Uh, to start at the beginning, in the late 80s, most uh, municipalities in the state of Louisiana had what we would call just a local dump. Um, as a matter of fact, there were 660 of them in this state. Every day they pick up garbage, they take it to some location on the edge of town, they push it in a pile and they either burn it or cover it. We created rules and regs that now it's called Subtitle D of the Solid Waste Regulations and it, it required landfills to be engineered to have liners to collect the leachate, to collect the gas, and they are state of the art. Now where we are today, fast forward, is every man, woman, and child in this country generates four to six pounds of garbage today. So as you start looking at the, 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 the curve of landfill to gas generation, we are almost at the top of that curve. And so I brought in all the operators recently. We are looking at ways to make sure that they are continuing to be good neighbors and that, they don't, that their business doesn't infringe upon the folks that live near them. So I think you're going to find this, vi this video very educational, and we look forward to getting your feedback. Thank you. Hello everyone, I'm Jason Myers, I'm an engineer manager at the Louisiana Department of Environmental Quality and today we're here at the St. Landry Parish Landfill to tell you about the landfills. St. Landry Parish Landfill is one of 25 landfills in the state that's permitted to take municipal waste. Municipal waste is defined as waste that you typically find in your household and your garbage. It also comes from commercial establishments and businesses. In addition to those 25 landfills, we also have 40 landfills which are permitted to take CND debris, construction demolition debris. That type of debris is things you typically find at construction sites or that's material that's left over from either the building or the renovation of some homes. And that can include pieces of lumber, bricks, pieces of sheetrock, what have you. So we permit all of these facilities uh, at LDEQ. And the permit process is pretty labor and time intensive. It takes a lot to permit a landfill. We, we look at all aspects of the, the siting, all aspects of the operation, all the way until closure of the site. So here we are, we're over here by the working face. The working face is where the collection trucks, as they come in the facility, they empty all their waste right here in one little spot. Now this working face will move as the landfill progresses. And if you can see behind me, there is a piece of geomembrane, this black area behind me right here. That's part of the liner for the, for the landfill. So these landfills are built in cells, a bowl, so to speak. And they line these entire things, the entire landfill cell, with both three feet of recompacted clay and a very thick geomembrane on top of it. So these geomembranes are 60 mil thick, so if you can imagine that compared to a garbage bag at your house, which is about 2 mil thick. Very flexible, whereas these are not very flexible at all. So they put them all under the entire landfill cell. They seam it all together so it's just one big piece up on that. And if you notice in the working phase here, they have a lot of equipment, a lot of compaction going on right there. They want to compact as much waste as they can in as small of a volume to maximize what they take and also they want to come back in there to kind of minimize some of the water that can get in there. So here we are now by a leachate collection riser. So you may wonder, leachate, what is leachate? So as you can imagine, leachate is defined as any water that percolates or comes from or flows through the waste that's deposited in the landfill. So as you can imagine, we get a lot of rain here, so we generate a lot of leachate from rainfall. We also, there's also a lot of liquids that are in the waste that we dispose of. So as this waste is put in there and compacted in, it releases the leachate and it, it goes down to the bottom to the bowl that I was describing earlier. So this pipe right here extends all the way to the bottom of the cell. It goes all the way to the bottom of the cell and there's a pump that's connected to this pipe that's at the bottom of the cell too. So our rules state that you have to maintain leachate or water in the bottom of the cell to less than 12 inches. So these pumps are usually outfitted with some sort of pressure transducers or what have you, such that whenever the, the liquid builds up to 12 inches, 
then the pumps will kick on and they'll drain the cell. And they just keep doing that over and over and over again. And that way it keeps all the water out of the bottom of the cell. Another way that they keep water out of the cell is of course cover. At the end of the day at the working face, they put six inches of cover over the entire working face to uh, number one, to help odors, number two, to try to minimize the liquids. And if you can see behind me, they have a good vegetative cover. This area has final cover on it. So what we're looking at here is two feet of, two foot of recompacted clay with six inches of topsoil on top. So that's another method that they use to try to keep water out of landfills. So here we are, this thing that we see here is called a monitoring well. So this is another level of protection to ensure that our bowl that I described earlier, that our landfill cell is not working. They, these monitor, this well is a pipe that extends into the ground into the first layer of usable groundwater. So the facility comes out here every six months and they'll sample this water and they'll analyze and make sure that the landfill is not leaking and that no contaminants are getting away. So these wells are located at approximately no farther than 800 feet apart. So if you were to look at an entire map of the facility, you would see monitoring wells that go all the way around the, the landfill. And it's important to keep these things safe because of course they go down to the ground. That's why we have these poles and we also have some good nomenclature on here to make sure that whenever they do the sampling, they, they're marking the right ones. Okay everyone, here we are right next to a gas collection well. As I mentioned earlier, municipal waste, as it decomposes, it produces a lot of gas. Uh, it'll produce a lot of, it usually produces about 50% methane, 50% CO2, carbon dioxide. So as the landfill is closing, as they're installing their final cover, then they will install these wells in order to maintain, to withdraw the gas from the landfill. This site withdraws the gas and they bring it to a gasification plant that we'll look at in a little bit. Some of the sites, they'll either flare it or they'll put, clean it up and they'll put it in a pipeline or they'll use it to generate electricity. So these wells will blanket the entire top of the, the landfill. As you can see, there's probably there's a few in the distance here with a bunch of underground piping connecting the two. So there's just a very small vacuum on these that just keeps withdrawing gas, withdrawing gas as the gas, as the, as the waste decomposes. So, as we were talking about leachate earlier, you may wonder what happens to all the leachate? You know, we have, we have leachate risers, then we pull the water out of the landfill. What happens to it? If you look off in the distance here, you see three ponds. So all of that water has pulled out of the leachate collection system that's pumped out of storm water. It's all brought to these ponds where it is treated and it's ultimately discharged through a water discharge permit. So here we are, on the top of the landfill, on the area that has received final cover already. As I mentioned earlier, we permit these landfills from beginning all the way to the end to when they close. So you may wonder, okay, how do we know it's closed? So the landfill, there's we have rules, we have rules that as certain areas reach their final elevation, that means as they, whenever they get as high as they get, they have a certain amount of time, typically 90 days, to begin installing final cover on these areas. So we look at, when we permit the landfill, we look at the geometry of the landfill, we look at the proposed height, we look at proposed slopes, and we look at the engineering analysis. We'll do slope stability analysis to make sure that whatever's being proposed as far as the height and the geometry is safe that we don't expect for there to be any kind of failure in the side of the landfill. So even after the landfill closes, there's a requirement that they maintain this for 30 years. So they will have to maintain this final cover. They will have to continue it uh, pumping leachate. They'll have to continuously monitor groundwater and they'll continuously just keeping up with the site to make sure that everything stays stable. We also have in our rules a financial assurance requirement. And you would say, okay, what happens if these folks were just to suddenly go out of business and leave? The financial assurance is there such that if that were to happen, 
DEQ has the funds available to contract to close the site. So it would be, we would contract, we would do the work, and we would use that money in that fund. So in summary, topsoil and our drainage layer goes over the landfill and filler, all of which covers the waste. A filter layer and leachate collection system form the bottom of the landfill in the monitor well. Gas vent and leachate pipes are in place to do the respective jobs of water testing, gas removal, and the removal of leachate. More information can be found on the LDQ website in the description below. So as I mentioned earlier, St. Landry Pierce does something kind of unique with their gas. They collect their gas, they clean it up, like I said earlier, they remove all the carbon dioxide, they remove a few other little volatile uh, organic carbon, and they make compressed natural gas with it. So as you see here, we have a landfill employee who's actually filling up one of their landfill trucks. So all of the landfill trucks and most of the collection trucks that run in the pairs are all fueled through this compressed natural gas.